Hello, welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at tilt shifting images. Tilt shift has been something that was really, really popular last week, and we've seen it applied to photographs, uh, videos as well, and also kind of stop motion things. So, uh, some of you may be wondering how to get that tilt shift effect. And uh, there are some easy ways to do it these days. I mean, you can get um, a tilt shift generator on iOS devices like the iPad and the iPhone. Uh, you can do it on programs Instagram now has a tilt shift button included in its software. But if you have got a digital photo set on your hard drive and you want to put it through a tilt shift effect, I'm going to show you how to do that inside of Photoshop with a few very simple and easy methods. So let's have a look at the photographs we're going to be using today. So, uh, bring up preview here. So this is the photograph I'm going to be working on today in Photoshop. Uh, this was taken in my hometown uh, city. So when you're selecting your photograph, you want to bear in mind that you want one that kind of looks down. So you want a kind of high-angled photo that looks down onto onto the landscape that you're looking onto. So rather than looking up, you want to be looking down. So you want a nice high-angle one. And this one kind of goes to that. You know, I'm standing on a bridge looking down. Uh, we've got Sainsbury's down here looking over the arches as well. So we're kind of looking down. And uh, I've already done the tilt shift, this is quite an old photo now, this is going back a few years. Uh, so this is what it looks like with the tilt shift effect on, so you know, you can kind of looks, you know, it looks more like a model village now, I mean you've got the shops here that look um, nice and bright and you know, it almost looks like a toy, a toy town. Um, so this is what we're going to be doing, we're going to be going from this to this. So let's open up the trusty Photoshop. There it is. So let me get this out of the way. Let's wait for Photoshop to open. Should have some like hold music or waiting music. There we go. Come on. There we go. We have our photograph in Photoshop. <coughs> Excuse me. So now our photo is in here and we're ready to start doing stuff to it. The first thing that we are going to do, if you've seen the tutorial where I'll show you how to add lens blur to around the edge of your image to kind of recreate a holger, you'll know all about quick mask mode. We're going to enter quick mask mode now. And so this is so we can apply a gradient to the to the image. So we can either press Q on our keyboard or press this little image uh, icon down here. I'm going to go for Q. And we're keeping on the image uh, on this little icon because it will go depressed when we enter quick mask mode so you know that you're in it. So I pressed Q. Uh, the icon is now, it also turns red. So we're in quick mask mode. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select the gradient tool so we can apply a gradient to our photograph. We can either do this by pressing G on our keyboard or going for this icon just here. I'm going to go for G. Now the most important thing is the type of gradient we're using. Uh, if we look up here on our gradient toolbar, we've got uh, five options. We've got the uh, linear, radial, angle, reflected, and diamond. Uh, we want the reflected gradient, so we're going to select that there. So now we've got our reflected gradient selected. Now all we're going to do is we're just going to select what we want to look most like a toy. So we're going to choose the bit that's going to be in focus. I'm going to choose the middle, the top of the arch here. So that's going to be my main focus point. And everything around that will be blurred and it will look like a model village. It'll look very nice. So just select um, the bits you wanted to look like a toy. If I wanted this spire here to look like a toy, I'd select that and drag it down. But I'm going to go through the top of the arch. So I'm going to click and just drag down to the bottom of the photograph like that, make the line straight and click and we'll get a nice red um, hue over the over the photo. Now those of you who have watched the previous video about blur will know that's completely normal. If you haven't got that red bit over the photograph you haven't entered quick mask mode. Just undo what you did and just press Q on your keyboard and then just draw the line down again. So this red gradient shows us where um, this red 
hue, sorry, is going to show us where the gradient is going to be affecting. So as you know, the denser the red, the less affected it's going to be. So we're kind of looking up here is going to be nice and blurred, and we're going to get more blur down here. <clears throat> So we're going across the image. You can also angle your gradients by drawing an angled line. So now we're going, so we're going to get more blur down here and more blur up here. So really it depends kind of where you want the blur um, to, to take shape. For the purposes of the demonstration, I'm just going to go horizontally across. So now that we've done that, we're just going to exit quick mask mode. You can either press your little quick mask icon down here or press Q on the keyboard. I'm going to go for Q. We now got the familiar marching ants. Now this is what most people that use Photoshop will be more accustomed to. And this just shows us the selection that the quick mask mode has made where we're going to get our blur. So now all we're going to do is add that blur. So we're going to go up to filter, blur, and then lens blur. And that will add it on. And here you can play around with the kind of settings that you want. Uh, so let's just um, in my last video I was a bit more conservative in the kind of blur we were after but because we're going for a tilt shift um, effect here um, let's just let's just go crazy um, my mouse doesn't seem to be working too well at the moment Press OK. More hold music required. It does normally take a bit longer applying this kind of uh, lens blur. Obviously, in the last video, it was quite quick because you know I kind of left the settings quite conservative and quite low. Obviously, now we've put them up a little bit. It will just take a bit longer. It's still a lot faster than CS4 though. That's one thing I did did notice when I first started using CS5. So as that's almost finished, um, we're just going to go over what we've done just to recap. So you load your high angled image, so you're looking down on a scene. Enter quick mask mode by pressing Q or pressing the icon right at the bottom of your palette. <coughs> Select the gradient tool and select a reflected gradient. That's really important to make sure you get the correct gradient. Draw a line down from what you want to look like a toy the most, and then everything around that will be blurred. Exit quick mask mode, and then apply your lens blur, which is what is happening now. And we're finished, and we're there. The blur has been applied. As you can see, this bridge now looks a lot more blurred. Uh, the tree up here looks a bit more blurred. So we're just gonna deselect our marching ants, you can either go select up here and then press deselect, I think it is. Yeah, deselect. Or you can press Command D, which is quicker and easier. Control D if you're on a computer. So we've got our blur in place. <laughs> so we've got our blur in place. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to open up a saturation layer. You can go to image adjustments and open up hue saturation or press command U. <coughs> However, I prefer doing it in um, adjustment layers so that you can go back and tweak them. It doesn't apply it to the image, it applies it to a layer on top of the image. So you can go back, delete, adjust and do whatever. So here, all we're going to do very simply, let me just make this bigger, is just click on our saturation and crank it up. Uh, plus 50 looks pretty good. It all again depends on your taste and style. So this is the image before. It looks really grey in comparison and this is the image now. The sky is a lot bluer, the bridge is a lot bluer, we've got more sunlight coming over over the bridge now. The bridge itself looks um, nicer, this lens flare looks more, it uh, stands out more and the image just kind of jumps out at you and this kind of uh, accelerates the effect. So we can already see that even even just with the saturation it's looking more like a tilt shift photo. So that's that in place. Just let me double check my notes. You have a tilt shift photograph. So it really is that simple. Again, quick mask gradients, saturation, done. That's really all there is to it. 
So thank you for watching this video on how to make your own tilt shift photograph. Um, my next tutorial I'm looking at the many many ways that you can turn an image to black and white and grey scaled because there are a few number of ways and I'm going to be looking at which ways are the best and how to get the best black and white photographs out of your computer. Um, if you're not already please subscribe to this channel you can also follow me on Twitter at, at at, at Josh Lewis Photog. We also have a Facebook page, just search for Josh Lewis Photog, all one word, and you'll find us there and click that like button. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.